Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the 10 a.m. Technique Live at the Wilderness Getaway Online Crop. And I apologize for the late start. Um, we're just sorting out some things here and getting ourselves <laughs> on the ball, on the ball. And so let me just bring up the video on the side so I can see who's popping on to watch. I know some of you are probably going to be watching this on replay because you're at work or have other things going on this morning. Um, so that is quite all right. The good thing about, um, about Facebook is we have that replay ability and we love that. So if you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy. And if you're watching later, you can say replay. And so then I know who's who's here and who's watching after. So good morning. <laughs> we are starting our wilderness getaway adventure. And um, we've got a bunch of things planned for the course of the crop. And so um, I hope you guys are excited. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Jill. Hello, Mary. People are popping on, saying hello. Love that. And you can see I've got my all-purpose mat out on the table today. And I've got a piece of plain white cardstock, blank canvas, ready to do some crafting. Are you guys excited? Are you ready? And we are going to be playing with stencils and ink this morning. We're going to make a layout. Quite often for my techniques, I end up doing cards. But today we are doing a whole layout. So I hope you're ready. Good morning, Stacy. Nice to see you're watching. So I'm just going to show you quickly in our core catalog that started in August, the stencil that we're going to be using today. I didn't even mark my page, but they're not hard to find. And so we're going to be working with this um, pack of stencils up here, and specifically this stencil. Um, and that is stencil pack number one, and it's the 12 by 12 uh, stencils. So these are 12 by 12 acetates, and some of them, like these, are all over um, stencils. And then there's some, like these ones up here, which are... Um, sort of divided up into smaller stencils, but on a large sheet, okay? So we're going to be using this one, and you can probably tell from the picture why I have chosen this one. There's some wood grain, there's some trees, there's arrows, there's the explorer, um, and then this fun little one here that's got like the whole adventure happening. So, you know, it really suits our theme for the crop. So I'm going to be using that. I'm going to be using that with some of the blending brushes. And they were probably on the same page, and I skipped right past them. Um, yes, they're right there. The new blending brushes that came out in this catalog, which are fabulous. And we're also going to be using some thin cuts. And let me just bring these in. I hope these are still available. I didn't double check. These are the Layered Flowers Thin Cuts. Okay, so the Layered Flowers Thin Cuts. And I think I think they are because I only just bought them recently. <laughs> Even though they've been around for a while. So this stencil that we're going to be using, I've got it right here. And it's got some fun stuff. It's got wood grain. It's got a uh, title, um, trees, lots of things. So we are going to make use of probably three quarters of this stencil page all on one um on one layout and so let me just grab this at our um retreat we had last weekend at my mom's house uh mom gave everybody a sheet of this um drawer liner and that is a fabulous spot to put your ink pad when you're crafting especially with the blending brushes because it keeps it from moving around and so I'm going to be using that today. I've got toffee ink first up on the Versamat. And I'm going to grab my blending brush that I used for browns. And if you're ever worried that the um, that your brush might have brown from something else you did, 
You can always just rub it off on a scrap piece of paper, but really it doesn't hold a lot of ink, so it doesn't really, you know, you can switch from one brown to another pretty simply. It's not too terrible, right? It doesn't make too much of a mess. Good morning, Shannon. Um, I like the shirt you were wearing in your selfie this morning. That's perfect. <laughs> Okay, we're going to start out first by using this wood grain stencil here. And I'm going to be moving my stencil all around my sheet of paper here, adding some, some um, uh, wood grain texture. And one thing I want to mention is that because this stencil is sort of in a square, but it's open-ended in that there's not a straight edge anywhere, you can just kind of keep going. You You can... Just sort of stick it together in places, and it's it's fine. It doesn't it doesn't um, doesn't bother it too much <laughs> to move it around. I'm gonna have to scooch my ink just a little bit. Grab some ink on my blending brush, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add ink to paper. And you might say, "Oh my gosh, she's just kind of going at it," but that's kind of the effect I want. I want to just get some ink on there, and then I'm gonna just shift my um, stencil. I mean, I'm going to flip it around and get it going a different way and just lay it right down. I'm going to go off the edge of my stencil here. Oops. Got to hold it down a bit better than that. Go off the edge of my stencil and add some inky goodness here like that. And then I'm going to shift it along and add some more over here. I kind of get involved with my stencils. I get my fingers all over it and, you know, get myself good and inky by the time I'm done. And that is <laughs> one of the, kind of one of the fun parts of using stencils. And then let's add some more up here. Just kind of add like so. And... I think that's good for there. So see, we've kind of created that fun all over. I love that the blending brush goes on so smoothly as opposed to the foam ones that, you know, it just kind of fades in, fades out, and it looks really cool. Really cool. Loving it. Okay, so let's move down here. Let's add a little bit of wood grain just on this edge. A lot of people use um, like pixie spray and st things like that to hold their stencil down. I've never really had an issue one way or another using a stencil, um, so I don't bother with those. And then I'm going to add some up here in this corner as well. And just kind of make it here and there. And I'm going to go off the edge with it like that and have it kind of come out in a sort of a triangle-y pattern. And there we go. Lovely. So when you're doing stenciling, you want to keep in mind um, the size of your page and the fact that you want some stenciling to happen in different areas. Quite often we kind of aim for three different areas so that we get sort of a progression around the page. And so you can see I've put a sort of a medium size amount here, a large amount here, and then a small amount down here. And um, I think that's a nice combination. And it kind of keeps your eye traveling around the page. Now I'm going to switch to a darker brown. And this time I'm going to go for espresso. And we're going to open that up. Just set it down on my mat like so. And I'm going to start adding some of the arrows. So we have two kinds of arrows. I got my whole thing upside down right now. We've got sort of a really um, traditional looking arrow. And then we've also sort of got this border of arrows. And so I'm going to go ahead and add a border strip all the way across my page. So I'm going to start off. Actually, I'm going to start on this side um, right about here and try to, you know, kind of make it so it's going to go straight across. <laughs> you never know. Grabbing some of that espresso ink, which is darker than the toffee, and I'm going to work my way this way. 
And because this is a stencil that's a repeated um, shape, you can just go as far as you want and then you lift up your stencil and you can overlay it right onto the one you've already done and just continue on. That's the perfect thing about these kinds of stencils is you can just lift and continue. So there we go. We're working our way farther along. So let me know in the comments, are you guys um, keen on stencils? Do you enjoy using stencils? Do you pull them out often or have stencils been something that you haven't really tried before? Let me know. I love to hear whether people have tried something or whether it's new to them. And um, the great thing about stencils, as you can see, I'm starting to build things onto my page. So now I've added that nice sort of border going across, giving a little grounding spot to my layout. And um, you can kind of keep layering and layering and layering stencils. And then, you know, amazing things can happen. <laughs> you just never know what might happen when you start layering your stencils. Okay, I'm going to go up here to this top corner, and I'm going to put some of those more sort of traditional stylized arrows on here. But because the tip of my arrow kind of gets close to the edge of my paper, I'm going to actually just tuck a piece, or sorry, it's close to the edge of my stencil. I'm going to tuck a piece of scrap paper just under the edge because quite often if you're inking and you're near the edge, you'll end up getting a little bit of ink past that line. You'll have a sharp line and then a little skiff of ink. So if you tuck a piece of scrap paper under there, that kind of cuts down on that from happening. So just add some espresso on there like that. You can see that over that overshot of ink, and if I hadn't had that scrap paper there, I would have had that on my layout, and I don't necessarily want that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna add another arrow, just kind of tucked in along beside that one, add my scrap paper as well, and just go ahead and ink that one up. There we go, so easy, oh my goodness. So easy. And you can create a similar type effect um, using stamps as well. And you can combine your stamps with your stencils. Today, I'm not going to be actually using any stamps, which is kind of unusual. <laughs> You're probably all going, what? Monica's not stamping. Um, I'm also not fussy cutting. So, you know, it's going to be a strange, strange uh, <laughs> occurrence here. So I'm going to add another arrow pointing the opposite direction to those other ones, just because our arrows down here are pointing the other direction. And, you know, when you're out in a wilderness um, situation, you can go just about anywhere you want. You know, you just take you wherever your, your feet can take you wherever they want. So I think it's kind of cool to use some arrows um, to create our layout. And then we've also got something really cool on here, and that is, I'm just going to clean my brush off just a smidge, because I'm going to go back to the toffee in a few minutes. So I'm just going to get some of that darker ink off, and of course, there it is. And we're going to switch, actually, first to the shortbread. And we're going to be using these trees that kind of look like birch trees. And I've used these before on, um, I think I've demoed it using a card and creating some trees on there. That might have even been our last, um, our last crop that we used these trees. But this time we're going to use it for our layout because the photo that I'm bringing in uh, on this layout is, involves some trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of tuck these trees down here like this in amongst the wood grain. But I'm not going to ink right to the bottom. The bottom of these trees has like a sharp edge and the top of the trees has a sharp edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to not ink right to the end so that my ink kind of fades out but doesn't have that sharp finished edge on it, if that makes sense. And um, that's sometimes nice to do 
when you're kind of trying to make an organic feel to your stenciling is to just sort of have the color fade out rather than with have those defined edges. So just adding that shortbread ink like that. And let me lift this up so I can show you what I mean. So you see here that this tree just kind of fades away. You don't see the bottom of the trunk. And then up here at the top, the branches, they just kind of fade, fade off into the distance. And a few people were commenting about how foggy it is um, in this morning outside. And it was definitely foggy here. So we're kind of envisioning that there's a bit of fog or something happening in this layout. Now I'm going to add some more trees, but I'm going to lower them down and kind of have them a little bit um, down near where I have my line of arrows going here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same technique where I just add the ink to the edges, but not right up to the edges. So getting as much height as I can to my trees without getting those sharp lines. And keep going all the way across. And shortbread is not necessarily a very dark color, but when we're kind of creating this sort of birch tree-esque feel, it, it's, you know, it's darker than just having a white tree. <laughs> white tree isn't really going to show up on white cardstock, right? So there we go. And then we're going to add in some toffee on top of that. So bringing back in our toffee. We're keeping our colors fairly simple. You can see on here, so far we pretty much just have different tones of brown. So now we need to come in with this second layer of this stencil. So the first layer is the trees. The second layer is the detail on the trees. And they're not precise. They are stylized to make it look kind of barky and chunky. And so you're not going to have them line up precisely where the trunk is. Some of them will hang over and that's that's done intentionally. And so you can just go ahead and just in the places where you ink the trees, just go ahead and add some of those fun little birchy details and I can pick it up here and show you close up, up to the camera so you can see how it adds those sort of barky birchy feeling to our tree trunks and then we're going to repeat that over here I have to kind of keep moving my page around because I don't want to drop my stencil into the um into the ink pad so we're kind of doing a lot of meandering about the uh, all-purpose mat today. <laughs> so let's add some of the toffee on this one as well. All the way across. Now some of these trees will get covered up by my photo because yes, I do have a photo for this layout. And you will see, when you see the photo, you will understand where I'm going with all of this fun inking, right? It sort, of, it sort of will become also clear. Okay, so I'm going to set my stencil aside and I will wash that up later after the video is done. And now I want to bring in one more color that's going to kind of diverge from all the browns. And that is to bring in pine, which is a nice dark color. Looks good with all of these browns that we've got going on here. And for this, I am going to do some inking freehand. Now, this can be a little bit scary sometimes, and you might look at it and go, mm, dog's breakfast when you're done, but just wait because it, it will it will come together. So I'm going to put some ink on here, and you can even touch your brush off on a scrap piece of paper if you're hesitant to add the color right away directly. And then you can go ahead and add some of it to your layout as much or as little as you want and just to add a little bit of something so you're not going to have any defined edges because you're just freehanding but it's going to look cool i promise so then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some up here to give the impression 
of leaves on our trees. Okay, we're going to go right off the edge and we're just going to lightly go around. It's always better to start out light and then you can add some darker elements. And I must say that I would not be confident doing this with the foam blending things. Um, but these brushes <laughs> have up my confidence in my inking abilities. So we're just going to add sort of some mottled color. So you can see now I'm not tapping off once I get sort of a base of color on there. And then also a little bit of greenery down at ground level. Because when you're in a forest, yes, there are leaves up in the trees, but there's a lot of green down near the ground, right? You've got the undergrowth and all that fun stuff. And I just realized there's lots of comments popping up here. Michelle loves her stencils now that she's used the new brushes. These are game changers, these brushes. Mary likes using stencils on cards and scrapbook pages. Good morning, Sue. Oh, you're just popping in for a minute. You love stencils. You're in the park taking photos of wildlife. Awesome. I can't wait to see those. You're going to have some wilderness getaway photos for us to look at. So then we're going to also add some green over here at this side with these trees. Good morning, Jody. You're joining us from work. Awesome. Don't let the boss know. And <laughs> so let's just add a little bit more. I want to get a little bit of darker color on here as well. There we go. And also some ground level green. It's kind of like we're creating the fog, right? That we were experiencing outside today. We're creating a little bit of ground level fog in our forest. Lovely. I kind of like the way that the, the wood grain almost looks like water here, like water around the trees. I think that's very cool. Um, <laughs> what do you do with Monica? No fussy cutting. I know, right? And it's terrible. No fussy cutting. All the things you've come to expect from me. <laughs> Joanne loves the trees. Awesome. Looks like you're creating a lovely pathway. Yeah, it does kind of look like a pathway, doesn't it? Like a trail through the forest. Awesome. Joanne loves the brushes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, hey, Marilyn, good morning, joining us from the East Coast. So, okay, so we've kind of got our background done. So we have our gorgeous stenciling with the wood green. We've got our arrows. We've got our trees. Then we've added some freehand. And when you look at the freehand, and I know I have this same problem too. I look at it and I go, oh, I just ruined my background. But don't worry. It's, it's, it's going to work. I, I promise. The photo that I'm bringing in to add to this page is one of my two boys and they were horsing around in this big old tree at my parents' farm and I thought it would be just the perfect um, picture, especially since like Joshua is wearing, you know, camo um, shorts and a brown um, muscle shirt that's got some green on it. Justin's wearing green pants, but he does have this little pop of red, and that's going to come into play in a minute with a bit of the embellishing. And then I've gone, and this is a four by six, I've gone ahead and cut uh, four and a quarter by six and a quarter um, photo mat using the espresso um, paper so it matches with our ink. And because I don't want to go too crazy with my colors because we're trying to make this look sort of organic-y and I'm going to go ahead and glue those two together leaving some border all the way around. Now I could distress the edge of this photo mat. I could do all sorts of things. My photo is kind of distressed because this is an old photo that's been on my fridge for years and years because <laughs> my boys are now um, 20 and almost 19. So this, this is an old photo. But um, I kind of... Uh, thought that I would leave the photo mat as is and then I'm going to go ahead and glue this down and what I want to do is I want to kind of land it on this um, on this border strip and hopefully I'll get it kind of straight-ish from 
from the edge. Because <laughs> you never know, my my uh, stencils could have been really crooked and all sorts of stuff, but um, hopefully we'll get it straight. Let me just bring in my Versamat. So that kind of cuts down on some of the shine from the all-purpose mat. The all-purpose mat is fabulous for the inking because any overshot of, of ink or anything that happens can just be wiped right off of it. It's so fun. And you will see that my fingers are definitely inky. You know, some fun has happened in the craft room when the fingers get all inky. But I want to bring in, as I said, some of the... Um, cut items from the, I always have to remind myself, Layered Flowers Thin Cuts. And what I've cut is I've cut some of this leafy branch, some of this leaf, and some of um, this flower and this, and also this center. And um, i got to fix that one. It's kind of overlapping everything, but that's okay. It's all right. So I've cut a bunch of things, and I've done it in a few different colors. So I have some of the leaves in the, uh, let me see, toffee and pine and also espresso. So I've got a bunch of those and then I've got some pine and espresso and toffee in this color. And then I decided to bring in some of the red and to do that, I cut out some of the flowers that kind of layer up because they're called layering flowers in scarlet. And so I cut the back in the dark side, which is the true color side. And then this layer, I flipped my cardstock over and cut it on the back side, which is a little bit lighter. And then I also trimmed out centers for my flowers with just uh, black cardstock. So let's go ahead. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to glue these flowers together. And I'm going to do the trick that I like to do where I add a little bit of glue to my hand, just like that. And then I can just tap my layer into the glue. And it gets nice coverage, but not too much. And when I'm sticking these layered flowers together, I try to look for the most... Um, remarkable part to uh, line up. And so this little petal here has a very pointy sort of swoop on it. And that makes it the easiest thing for me to line those two things up. And then with liquid glue, you can spend a half a second and just kind of smoosh it around until it's in the exact spot you want. And then I can also come in with my black center of my flower and add that on, and it doesn't really matter which direction that goes, it just sits in the center. So there's one of my flowers. I'm going to do a couple more. So let me just grab those. Now this glue is not usually the glue that I use for this, and it does dry fairly quickly, so I have to have to move along. <laughs> Less tucking, more gluing. Otherwise I will have no glue to, to glue down my flowers. So usually I use the... Um, the clear glue for this and it stays um, liquidy a little longer. <laughs> but it's way over there on the other side of my table and I didn't grab it. <laughs> so we'll use this for now. So there we go. I'm getting it all over my fingers. And the last one. There we go. Grab this one, add some glue, lovely. And if you're somebody who's sensitive to sensory things, you may not want to put the glue on your hand, but you can put the glue on uh, the edge of your all-purpose mat and do this same technique if you want. Um, but yeah, I find this is just easiest. And then I don't run the risk of accidentally putting a piece of paper down in my puddle of glue. <laughs> yes, this um, this particular flower does look a lot like a poppy Joanne. And um, I know my kids are in the Air Cadets. And so last night and on Saturday, they were doing the poppy campaign at the mall with the Legion. <coughs> and um, so, yes, this would be fun to do a layout um, if I get some pictures of them doing that. And um, 
that would be lovely. So let me see. I've got a few more of these leaves to bring in. So I want to kind of create a couple different clusters on my page. So I'm going to start out with this one. And I like to just add glue just to the stem when I'm doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to overlap right onto my photo like this because there's nothing too major happening up in this corner of the photo. So I can feel confident doing that. And then I'm also going to add maybe this lighter colored one. No, maybe the darker one. And just run that down the center. And I'm going to kind of put them in opposite directions like this. Okay, don't worry. It's going to be okay because we're going to we're going to add some stuff up here to kind of make it all make sense. <laughs> and then we're going to add one of our leaves and see how that leaf just kind of covers everything up all those little stemmy bits so that's where that's where things come into play <laughs> and I could be using foam tape to add a little bit here but um but I haven't so I haven't <laughs> I haven't so I haven't so there we go we've covered up all those little stemmy bits and I could um even kind of lift those but once they're in a page protector you're not going to see that anyway so no worries okay let's come in now with let me see we'll go with this lighter colored stem over here and kind of have it branching off that way then we'll add our green one coming off this way and this cluster is going to be a little bit larger so I'm spacing out the branches a little bit and um, then let me see I think I will use some foam tape now I'm going to grab my micro tip scissors and I'm going to put a little bit of foam on the back of this one and that's the regular foam and then let me see if I can find it I thought I had my thin foam tape here as well as I rifle around. I haven't quite unpacked every single thing. I'm going to just go with the thick one again. Every single thing from the retreat. <laughs> so I kind of have to do the, hmm, now where did I put that um, type of thing. So there's one and we'll add another one over here like this. And then also some greenery. So let's add a little extra green popping up the top there. And don't, I know some people get a little bit anxious when they create a background that they don't want to cover it up. And you know what? <laughs> cover it up. It will be okay. It will be. You will, you will survive. Your layout will survive. The background is called a background because it goes in the background. And so don't get anxious that you've covered up your background. Um, you know, it's it's there to be part of the background. I will I will totally support covering up backgrounds. So let's add a couple little leaves here like this. Maybe put one this way. And then our last little flower going to add down here as well. <laughs> oh, Jill says she knows something she'll be ordering. <laughs> the, isn't that always the way? People, people complain about that. I show them things and then they're like, oh, I need to buy that. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just how it is sometimes. Um, okay, so we've got all of this happening. Now you can see that I don't have a title on my layout yet. And I'm not 100% sure that I actually want a title on this. I will be adding some journaling, probably just tucked right in here. Um, but I'm not sure about the title because um, I haven't decided what title I want, but I may put this in a frame and I might just leave a title off of it. If I was going to put it in an album, I would probably add a title. So once I make that decision, then I will determine 
you know, whether it's getting a title or not. But let's add in some of these new green dots. And in this collection of green dots, you get a variety of colors. So you get the pine, the clover, and avocado, I'm pretty sure. And so I want to use some of these nice little pine dots. And let me see, I could use some, I could use any of them. There's hearts and stars and dots. And then they're also different sizes. So large, medium, and small. So that is fun because you can kind of mix and match things as you as you create so let me see we're gonna add maybe so, a little heart up here like that sort of pine on pine and maybe a little heart there as well like that and then a large one maybe over here and I think that adds a nice little bit of shine I don't want to add too, too much because as I said, I want to keep it sort of feeling organic-y and um, not too, too, too crazy. And so, you know, keeping it simple. So let's also add, we'll add one just tucked in there and maybe another little one tucked there and a medium one. Usually you kind of want to work in triangles, right? So you're creating a little triangle, a little triangle even with our embellishments, we created a triangle. Um, the great thing about using regular shaped photos is that you've already kind of got spots to make a triangle because um, there's corners. <laughs> so you just kind of aim for the corners, right? Yes, this border kind of does look like stitching, right? Like you've done a row, a line of stitching across your page. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's a great way of looking at it. Um, <laughs> Carol's like in the layout. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. And then let's add maybe a couple little bits of embellishment up here. Let me see. We can do another little heart just like that. And maybe a little dot. We'll just do a little a little cluster for for no particular reason. And I may come in with a little tiny piece of pattern paper and put a little sort of dovetailed banner or something there. But I want to leave it here for now until I decide about whether it's going in a frame or in an album. Um, but I can certainly add my journaling either way with my journaling pen. So we started out with a plain white piece of white daisy cardstock. We added in stenciling with the wood grain pattern from that stencil pack number one using toffee. Then we overlaid it with the espresso using um, the arrow stencils. And I love how they're just kind of tucked in there, but because of the, the design of it, you still get the impression that it's an arrow. Plus you have that up here to, to denote that. And then, of course, the stenciling with shortbread and toffee to create the trees. And then inking without even using a stencil, just freehand to add that little sort of fog of green around, giving the impression of trees. I love how our brains connect the dots, right? You look at this and you're like, oh, leaves on the tree. Even though there's nothing that's defined on it that says this is a leaf. But then, of course, we add in those layered flowers, thin cuts, with all of the beautiful leafy branches and then just a little bit of a pop of red scarlet to bring in the color from Justin's hat there. And I think that is just a fun layout, easily done, just plain piece of white daisy cardstock, some ink and stencils. So have a wonderful rest of your morning. We will see you again soon. Please take a look at the schedule because my daughter is back in school. Um, the schedule has that little bit of a change for our afternoon chat and craft. Normally, we would be from 1 until 3, but because I have to pick her up at 2.30, we are shifting an hour earlier, so we're chatting and crafting from noon until 2. All right, so we will see you again soon. Toodaloo! Bye!